I'm already taller than you. Wow, that's appropriate. <laughs> Enjoy it for a change. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> Eric J. Olson here and Kevin Daisy from Array Digital. So today we're going to talk about what are we going to talk about, Kevin? We're going to talk about the latest trends in in digital marketing. Digital marketing, what we specialize in. Yep, yep. So digital marketing is constantly <clears throat> changing. I mean, every single day there's some big news that's coming out. I listen to flash briefings and podcasts a lot. And it seems like literally every single day there is a big breaking change somewhere in digital marketing. Yeah. It's usually in search and social media. That's what I found. So social media is still rapidly being developed. So even though it's been around for, I don't know how long, a long time, <laughs> it's, it still seems like there's always something happening <clears throat> in social media. Yeah, and there's new platforms coming out as well. So like TikTok, for example. So... This always got to keep up with it. Always got to be researching it. Uh, podcasts are great to listen to. Um, I was listening to uh, Marketing School this morning. Yep. And they shared some uh, latest trends in business, uh, which weren't necessarily marketing related 100%, but um, they kind of put a twist on it. But um, it's just constantly keeping up with it. Yeah. So so one of the challenges is that that we hear a lot from prospects and then just people that we know is that it's, it is very difficult to keep up with all these changes. So one of the reasons that we decided to do this live uh, is because we just want to inform people about what's going on in digital marketing. So it's, it's literally a full-time job for us. And that's what we do for a living is we keep up with what's happening in digital marketing. And obviously not everyone that's watching can also keep up. So what we want to do is we want to just kind of like digest all of those changes and provide you with what we think are the most important changes. Absolutely. One of the things that we did recently is we put together an ebook, which you can download from thisisarray.com slash trends. That highlights the five trends that we think are going to really see big movements in 2020. So again, just go to thisisarray.com slash trends. All you have to do is put in your email address and then we'll send you the ebook. It's about a 20 pager and it goes over the top five trends, which we're gonna cover some of those yeah. right now. Yeah, so um, what, actually the very first trend in that ebook is about going live, which ironically is what we're doing right now. So, so the, <laughs> the setup that we have right now is we're using a, a mic, which um, you can kind of see here. And we're using a laptop, which is right in front of us. And then we've got the ring light and then a camera in the middle of the ring light. But this is a much more sophisticated kind of a setup than you would normally get with, well, with social media going live. Like, like with social media, yeah, like I don't that. have my phone on me, but it's <clears throat> usually you just, yeah, you hit go live and boom, you're going live. Yeah. So this is complicated and it's complicated because we're trying to or we are streaming to a lot of different platforms all at once so we need yeah. the software of the computer in order to pull that off but if you want to stream live on instagram on twitter <clears throat> on facebook TikTok supports this um youtube supports it linkedin if you get accepted which i've put in for i think you have too i put in for it yeah. <laughs> Not everybody gets that one. No, nah, no, nah, I put in three times, so that's a difficult one. And uh, all three times I get, like, the same response saying, basically, we let you know. And they've never let me know beyond that. <clears throat> You're so, not cool enough. No, nah, they, they must have some sort of algorithm, like number of followers and, you know, how much – I'm guessing how much engagement you get with every post and things like that. But yeah. um, we, we don't qualify. So there are some people on LinkedIn that have it, and it looks pretty awesome. I don't know what kind of like actual <clears throat> engagement they get from it. I, don't know. I would imagine it'd be very similar with the other platforms, but um, but that looks pretty cool. But but it is super easy. That's the thing. So except for LinkedIn, where there's an approval process, on all these other social media platforms, you just hit the button and you go. And you're yep. starting to see a lot of people do that in a lot of different situations. Yep. So I, I know the first time I went live was on Instagram, and uh, I, I think I was like pumping gas or something. And I was like, oh, let me, what is this thing? And so I pressed the button and I went live. And and a f surprisingly, a few people joined in. Yeah, yeah. They do good about uh, broadcasting that and, and building your, your followers to, to watch and all that stuff. So <clears throat> I've heard mixed things about, you know, the views you get. Um, but I've seen a lot of stats are that, 
people prefer live over recorded. Yep. Um, Facebook also, all the platforms prefer it and, and definitely, <clears throat> I think, give you more reach, more views, more eyeballs on a live video for sure. So if you have things to talk about, things you want to get out there in front of your potential clients, <clears throat> going live is definitely something that should yeah. be part of 2020 for you. Uh, if it wasn't already part of 2019, it's been around for quite a while. I think um, the 2015 was the first the well, Periscope or what was it called? Uh, well, uh, per- <clears throat> I don't know if Periscope was the first, but Periscope was one of like the first biggest ones. Yeah. And they used to be standalone. And then Twitter bought them. And it's kind of in Twitter, but it's also its own standalone app, which I, I haven't dug into it to figure out what that, like how it works. But I know you can still download Periscope. But when you go live in Twitter, it's like a Periscope URL, which is kind of weird. So I'm not sure what's happening there. But I, I think the um, the notification that you're talking about, yeah, the the fact that anyone that follows you gets notified when you go live, I think that's the big differentiator when it comes to going live. Yeah, because you still get the video after the fact, <clears throat> right? So you still get the archive, like if you were to upload a video, but you get the bonus. Yeah. Of the notification, <clears throat> yeah, like on Facebook, it'll like it'll highlight the person or Instagram and say they're go- they're live right now, <clears throat> so it brings attention to it. So you can go jump in and, and watch that right there. Where if I just put a post out, you know, I might see it in my feed, I might not, um, and uh, it just doesn't have the same effect. Yeah, yeah. So, so one other thing that I heard about going live is um, all of the platforms prefer it. They prefer you to go live. Yep. And so right now they are rewarding you by giving you more engagement, more exposure if you go live. So there's a perk there. But what I've heard is that if you go live frequently, like daily in particular, a daily five minute live, then you ha- you you are more likely to see increased success than if you just post yeah. daily. And so I know when I, uh, I filled out LinkedIn, they ask you how frequent you're going to do it, what are you going to talk about, what are you going to say. <clears throat> and I'm sure that goes into how they choose you. But for someone as my, I said probably like, yeah, I'm going to go live once a week <clears throat> versus someone that says, I'm going to go live five times a day. You know, um, you probably have a, lot, a higher chance of getting accepted into theirs if you were more frequent. That's true. Yeah, you good know? point. So. We, we should reapply and, <clears throat> just, and say we'll do it. Just lie I mean, like, completely. <laughs> just like, <laughs> well, I think I, I, I'd probably commit to three or four times a week going live. I mean, I would like to. I'd, I'd actually like to like be able to walk up here and go live. I mean, yeah. the thing is, well, number one, we don't really know how to use the system, so we have to get someone <laughs> to help us. But number two, um, well, it's okay. just you're – I mean, like, there's people around us working, right? I mean, yeah. you can't see everybody, but they're working, and so it's kind of like – uh, intrusive and so you don't want to do too much of that so it's almost like you have to be kind of in a private place you know like in a closed door office or something like that or maybe your car I don't know but so th- there are some downsides of, of going live but really that's probably just the downsides of making a video <clears throat> yeah but I've seen some great content for people that just go live wherever they are and and uh, it, it works out great I think it's it's good content yeah so yeah. cool so right. enough about going live number one going go live on. uh, number two <laughs> Uh, let's talk about ephemeral content, all right? So what ephemeral does that word content, mean, right? Ephemeral means it's like short lived. It's it's here for a day and then it's gone. And uh, these days, it's really stories, right? So in particular, Snapchat was the pioneer of stories. Yep. And then Instagram <clears throat> stole that feature, just totally ripped it off and brought it into Instagram, and that's when it really kind of exploded, and so did Instagram, and yeah, Facebook. You mean, Snapchat, yeah. Snapchat has kind of like subsided. Facebook's since brought that into their platform as well. Yeah. For me, with the people that, that I follow, I see a whole lot more of stories in Instagram than Facebook. Yeah, I have seen uh, an uptick in Facebook stories and my friends and followers that, that actually use it, more so. Like mm-hmm. a few months ago, I was very few that, that actually used it. Uh, but I do see more of it now. Um, so there has been some change there. I feel like Facebook's almost made it a little more visible, a little bit more attention has been brought to it. But Instagram is, is where it's at. Um, and this, yeah, the stories are you know, full all day, every day. Yeah, so I don't, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I, I'm, I know that the engagement on stories or at least the eyeballs on stories has drastically increased over the last couple of years. And I know personally, when I go into Instagram, 
the first thing I do is I run through all the stories. So I, I rarely scroll through the posts. I just go right into the stories. I get all the way through my stories. And then and then I take on the burden, if you will, of scrolling through the posts. So I don't know what it is, like why I personally feel that, that way. And I don't know if it's indicative of, of how others use Instagram, but it just feels, um, posts feel like, they feel like work. You know, like, and, and I, I don't, I don't want to work really in social media unless I'm actually working in social media for, for the company. But when I'm like just doing it for fun, like, I don't, I don't know. It just feels like those posts, they've gotten to the point where there's, the expectation is perfection. And, and I don't, I don't like that. I don't want perfection in my social media, but, yeah. but in stories, it's much more authentic. So I, I oh, definitely yeah. gravitate to stories. It's like anything goes, you just throw up whatever you, you slap a bunch of crap in there. It's like, you just, you're okay with it. It's like, it's how they're supposed to be. Yeah. You know? Well, because you know, it's going to be gone in 24 hours. Yeah. So versus being on your perfectly manicured Instagram page. Yeah, and you know, I, I think that's an issue with Instagram is the expectation of perfection that it's got to be a perfect picture, it's got to be the perfect caption, you got you have to use the perfect hashtags, and it's got to get a certain number of likes if you still see likes, or the certain number of comments before you think it's successful. Yeah, you know, so, or you delete it and then try to do something else. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> I, I see that a lot. Um, my. If I go to my daughter's Snapchat, she's 16 years old. Uh, not Snapchat, I'm sorry, um, Instagram. She only has a few posts. So she curates which posts she leaves permanently on her profile. And there's other people that I follow. <laughs> my, my nephew's the same way, where uh, he only has like six posts. So even though he's posting like every single day or multiple times a week, when you go to his profile, you don't see all those. You only see the ones that he thinks are worthy of being on that permanent archive, if you will. Huh. So it's almost like they're using them like stories and the good ones they'll, they'll keep and That's stick. a good point. <clears throat> so it's like, I can throw whatever one out there, the ones that work out well, I keep them, yeah. the ones I delete, and then I don't have to worry about it. You know, I never I'm thought of it like that, but yeah. Yeah, and also you can, you know, you can put stories in your, uh, uh, your different categories and, yep. and save those there too. That, so. Yeah, another good point. Yeah, <laughs> so that is interesting because stories are ephemeral. They're built to go away in 24 hours, but you the can make ones them stick. But you can make them <laughs> stick. The ones that you don't want to be ephemeral. Yep. I wonder why they did that. That that is interesting. Maybe it's because they were just pushing stories at the time, so they wanted to highlight them in that row. But you would think a story would just vanish forever. But they they actually made it. They made a, a loophole, their own loophole. Yeah, if I want to make them that. stick, you know, so like I have one. I think I have one for family, one for um, culture, one for revenue, or just you know, different topics within the business, um, and then a family one as well. So I'll just drop some in, in there to keep them as long as an archive, hmm. you know. So. Yeah, but you would think that that would be better as a post, and maybe it's just because you created it as a story, and then, then you realize <laughs> after the fact that it was like a permanent thing, and... So you can yeah, hey, basically convert it. That was a good one. I want to. I want to keep that. I'm going to put it into my my archive for my category. That's interesting. So I never. <clears> thought you don't of have that. really the same controls and editing that you in stories as in a post. Yeah. Either. So interesting. So <laughs> speaking of Instagram, I was driving to work this morning, listening to a flash briefing. It's called the Instagram Stories with my buddy Daniel Hill. What's up, Daniel? If you're watching, and he talked about how um, I'm going to just look down at my notes here. But um, the Instagram growth rate has sharply decelerated as of last year. In 2018, it was 10.1%. And in 2019, it was 6.7%. So it's dropped by 40%. It went from 10% in 18 to 6.7 in 19. It's, it's, expected, it's expected to continue to drop. It's being forecasted to be between five and a half and four and a half percent in 2020 and three percent to four percent in 20 and 21. So it's it's ramping down as far as um, the pace that people are joining. They attributed this to the fact that adults aren't getting onto the platform quite as quickly as was expected originally. 
But I mean, I was surprised that in 2018, only 10%. Yeah. That ten percent growth was being seen by Instagram. Like I, I, I thought it was a man, lot more. I, than that. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was thinking it'd be massive numbers. To be I thought it would be hundreds of percent <clears throat> because I, you know people say, well, younger people are on Instagram, and I'm like, when I talk to clients, potential clients, I'm like, well, I'm on everyone I know of my age or older is on Instagram. So, you know, I just seen such a shift there. People are getting in, getting on board, they're getting over there. Yeah. It, it felt like that, but I, I mean, I, I guess that was in like, I don't know, 2017 or so. But the yeah, fact that in 18, only only 10% growth, like that seems like a really low number, 10% yeah. in 2018, and then it's just going to get lower. So it's it's stagnant at this yeah. point. I mean, sure, you know, it's growing by single digit percentage points, but it's still it's still stagnant, right? Like the certainly whatever huge growth they encountered is not projected to continue, which I think is pretty significant for Instagram. Yeah. Like Instagram is where pop culture is these days, but if it's only growing at, you know, uh, six, five, four, 3%, like, I don't know. Is that really where pop culture is going to stay? Yeah. That's my big question. <clears throat> look at what's next. Well, so TikTok, <laughs> TikTok. Yep. Right. So, uh, I know we're thinking October, they hit 500 million users, active users. Um, that was back yep. a couple months ago, of course. Um, I think you have some stats. Yep. On so that, yeah. uh, worldwide, it's been downloaded 1.5 billion times to date. It's freaking nuts! I downloaded man. it twice. So. <gasps> and uh, in in 2018, which is the most recent data that I could find, because I don't I don't think they they release a lot of their data very frequently, but in 2018 they grew by 416 percent as far as number of downloads. Now. Uh, we don't. I don't know how many people actually like, subscribed. It would be probably a lesser number than that, but four hundred and sixteen percent increase. Now that's what I would expect from Instagram. I would assume that's way up, probably this past year, from that. Yes, that's when I feel like it got the most attention. Is it was around, but this past year, it's really where it was like, hey, this this is here. It, it, it kind of went mainstream with influencers. Yeah. All the celebrities got on there. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. saw like. Um, uh, Gary V got on there in a very big way. Uh, yep. The Rock got on there. Uh, gosh, I can't think of all the people. There's oh, uh, Howie Mandel is on there. I mean, there's a lot of like big names that are on there, mm -hmm. like A-list -A people that are on there yeah. now. So it's it's certainly gone to mainstream with influencers. So I mean, and like I don't think Instagram is going anywhere anytime soon, but it certainly feels like TikTok is a threat to Instagram. Yeah, and we're gonna continue to see more people at least get on TikTok. Maybe not switch to TikTok, but um, but it's kind of like an almost. I feel like it's an ephemeral kind of content. Oh yeah, because it's you're just kind of scrolling and you see like this funny video, and you only really want to watch it like one time, <laughs> and then you're done. You know, yeah, you're not gonna like, go back to it and so that. But it's it's interesting though too because it's it's still kind of um, open as far as the algorithm goes. So like you might get this ridiculous amount of views on a video. That you could never get on an Instagram account that you just started yesterday. <laughs> you know hey, I mean? Shannon, how many how many views did we get in our video? Which one? Yeah, uh, the TikTok video. Uh, I think it's up to like fifty thousand. Fifty thousand. All right. Yeah. So we did a TikTok video. We were playing around with it this summer, and we did a couple. Yeah. And there, there's one where I come out of my office with a stack of papers, and I put it on <laughs> Shannon's desk, and she looks at me all pissed, and then she slaps me in the face. So, and so it was from behind. You can see my head going back and forth with the music. It was pretty funny. But yeah. fifty thousand views. Yeah. That's that's impressive. Like we don't. <laughs> and we had just started the account and had no followers or whatever. I mean, just just nothing. Just boom, video went viral. Totally organic. Yeah. Yep. So that was really impressive. So this, the interesting thing is you can't do that on Facebook or Instagram. Very. I mean, it'd be very difficult to have something go like that. So uh, or LinkedIn. I try to crack that nut all the time, and I do well on LinkedIn, but. Uh, it's it's very hard to get something like that to happen. Yeah, LinkedIn's a tough one. Like um, a lot of people talk about the organic reach of LinkedIn, mm -hmm. but what I see and 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 what we all see with our accounts here is that we may get a, a couple of thousand. That's about right. A couple thousand views. Yeah, I got like week. seven seventy some hundred on one before Christmas on post. Yeah, but yeah, they, but it's definitely declining. Like. Um, you know, I had to think one of like twenty some thousand less this time last year, but all, it just has gone down big time. Yeah, the, the most I ever got was ten thousand. That was on one post, but but it's typically a couple thousand per week total. All all my posts, 
Yeah, yeah. And each post, for me at least, has been a, a few hundred. Yeah. And like, I, if I break a thousand, it's it's an exception. At this Over the point. holidays, it was really just nothing. Nothing happened at all. I had posts go out that just didn't get any views. So, so LinkedIn's a different different animal. You want to talk right. about one more I'll, thing? I'll just, um, throw out the one thing. I um, I was on LinkedIn this morning. They got the rundown that comes out. I think at six a.m. Um, so, just one of the things that come out is the because uh, we got GDRP, um, and so we have some crackdown on not just uh, well, on advertising. So in data, so you got like a TikTok, who is uh, it's a foreign country. Uh, how are they limited by what data they're collecting? I don't know, but um, the California law just came out. I think it went into effect yesterday. Yep. Which is like CCPA, which basically allows anyone that lives mm -hmm. in California to have their information deleted. So anyone that collects their information, they're allowed to say, hey, I want this gone, deleted. And so I think it's just one of the other you know, laws that's going to come out. There's going to be a lot more to follow this probably in other states um, that start to restrict data. So these big giants like a Facebook, Instagram, and you know, I got TikTok, are going to start to get cracked down on for data, which could affect you know us, you, for your advertising, targeting, Things like that that can be affected, and you're gonna have to look for other ways to market your products. So, um, if you if you rely on Facebook advertising, and that's how you make all your money, that could change, right? Uh, just like SEO, you're never really in control. Um, I've seen businesses where they rely on that, and their website gets changed by a company or whoever, and they just go out of business um, because that revenue stream goes away. So just look at um, you know how you're advertising, what you're relying on, and uh, these laws come out. Things might get strict, and you might not get the targeting you're used to, and now that's not a channel that works for you anymore. So it's just like all these trends, it's keeping up with it, keeping up with the laws, keeping up with what's going on, and adjusting and changing constantly. The data wars. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, and, and this is a law at the state level, right? And we're going to see other states come out with similar laws. Yeah. And so that means that every state that comes out with one of these privacy laws is going to have slightly different enforcement, which is going to make it extremely complicated to understand what needs to be done. Sure. To the point where, like, you know, we internally, we're going to have to have a library that says in this state you can do this and in this state you cannot. And it's going to affect our national campaigns for sure. But mm -hmm. um, if you're doing business in any particular state or if you have any customers in that state, then those laws typically apply to you whether you reside or your business is in that state or not. Yeah. Right, so like with the GDPR, which is the EU privacy law, that applies if you do any business in the EU. Right. So you don't have to be located there. So yep. an American business, our business, could be subject to that. Same with the California privacy law. And so that's how these laws are being enacted is that man, as long as you're doing something with a person in that sovereign area, whether it's a state yeah. or, or yeah. a collection of countries like the EU, yep. it, it applies to you. So there's a lot of changes and uh, the, the privacy, you know, privacy, it's interesting because, uh, you know, it's, for me, what I notice is that um, it seems like individual people don't really care that much about privacy. Like, you'll give up your privacy in a heartbeat for a free service like Facebook. Oh, Happens yeah. every day, right? And you do it so many times a day, it's crazy. You just You're not gonna read all those terms. And nah, you don't even scroll. Like, you don't even want to see them. Yeah, Never, yeah, right? whatever. Yeah, so you just like click through and you accept all sorts of crazy terms, um, which who knows what's in those terms, right? But uh, so from an individual standpoint, if it seems like the individual doesn't really care that much. But certainly the media plays it up, and then the government plays it up as well. Absolutely. So there, yeah. it feels like there's some sort of a fear tactic there, you know, like um, that, that they want to make you concerned about it, which is it's just an interesting dynamic. It's certainly something you should think about. You shouldn't just give up <laughs> any data for any reason. You should really kind of question why you're doing it. But we've given up so much data in the way of our phones in particular, websites oh, yeah. that we go to is crazy. Well, yeah, I think the media is always there to drum up some story, and that's their business, right? Yeah. So uh, they're always going to add fuel to that fire, and it, at the end of the day, it's going to affect us and and how you advertise and market your business. So we'll just have to uh, do what we got to do. Also, there's the Digital Marketing Trends for 2020 ebook. Go to thisisarray.com slash trends for that. That is free. Stay classy, Hampton Roads, or the 757. Whichever one you prefer. Tidewater. <laughs>
Oh, is it time? The 757. We're out. Later.